So when you first open up Sheet Cam, you'll be uh, greeted with um, the material size here. Now, um, these videos are all based off working with the Sheet Cam that is on the table's computer. If you want to put Sheet Cam on a separate computer, you will need to install it correctly. And there's a lot of settings that need to be set correctly. So we have a separate video that covers that. So don't expect to be able to just download Sheet Cam, pull it up, and have everything look the same. Or for that matter, have it be able to produce G code that the machine can read. It will not. It will have to have all the parameters set correctly. So <clears throat> basically, when you pull it up, this here is your material size. So your material size is key in a lot of ways. You can control the material size by going up to options and then job options. This will allow you to change the material size here. The origin, which we usually keep as the lower left. Um, thickness material you do not have to worry about because this is plasma. Rapid clearance. This is the height at which the machine transfers in between cuts. It's set at an inch and a half by default. So um, we like it. That seems to be a good height to miss most tip ups. Um, if you really want to, you can lower it, and this will have a slight increase on your uh, cycle time in between cuts or decrease, I should mean. I mean. Um, and then height, bottom material, above material does not matter. The plunge safety clearance is set to one inch. Now, I want you to understand the key of this is when you watch your machine operate, you will see it drop down from an inch and a half quickly to one inch and then from the one inch it will s slow down until it strikes the material. Um, so you really want to have this plunge safety clearance be at one inch. Now if you're always cutting a very flat plate you can decrease this but if you have plate that has warp in it um, what can happen is you may make a cut in an area that's lower and then when it transfers um, it strikes the plate before it reaches the plunge safety clearance and in doing so it will incorrectly set the height and chances are you'll fire right on top of the plate usually doesn't happen but a plunge safety clearance of one inch will prevent that from happening so but the most important thing here is your material size, that you can change it here. So cancel out of this. So let's start addressing over here on the left side. You have layers, parts, your tools, and operations. Now these, also, these operations are also located up here under this operation menu. Okay. In fact, all of these icons up here are basically representations of these different menus up here. Okay. Um, now, initially utilizing these menus up here will be helpful as it gives you a more full, fuller explanation of what each icon means. You got the ability to control this bar around here. You can click and change the, the order of these. Basically, you can drop one down, however you'd like to set up. You can change the size here. Um, usually I'll just make it big enough so I can see all my tools. I'll usually decrease the size of the operations down here because I usually use this menu for the operations. And so this gets me able to see all my tools. Um, so let's start by bringing in a part or a DXF file. Okay. So to do that, you're going to go File, Import Drawing. Okay. Now you're going to find this wire mount on your desktop. It's used as one of our test cuts when we set your table up. Uh, it will most likely be under a test file on your desktop. So if you import this wire mount, you always want to make sure you're importing DXF files. Okay. On the import, you get to pick your scaling. Most of the time, of course, you're going to be in inches, 
but you want to pick the appropriate scaling for whatever, however you drew the part. Drawing position, generally you leave it at the lower left, um, and you generally leave these other things unchecked. Use points for drilling we'll use sometimes, but um, leave it unchecked for now. It will be discussed in a later video. Now one thing to remember is Sheet Cam will remember whatever you did last so if you change any options the next time you go to bring in a file they will be set to those different options so so I'm going to click OK I bring the file in now Sheet Cam has given me a small warning up here it says drawing contains overlapping outlines that means that at some point in this drawing I had two lines that were laying on top of each other now Sheet Cam removed them for me um, and generally it does usually does a pretty good job of this but that is one thing you have to watch out for. Not always will sheet cam remove an overlapping line. Um, and sometimes it will bring both lines in. It will not know how to cut the object properly. So that's really just how drawing the, op the uh, object properly in CAD. Um, so what we see here is red lines are exterior cuts. The yellow lines are interior cuts. In a white line, that represents an open line. So that is just a straight line drawn in CAD. There's no inside or outside to this. By default, Sheet Cam cuts right on top of these lines. It will pierce at one end and cut and stop. Now, if my perimeter cut or an outside cut, if that showed up white, that would tell me that I had a problem with that cut somewhere in my drawing I had a broken line either two of my corners didn't meet up or I had two lines laying on top of each other she cam wasn't sure which one I wanted to be um, to cut so it would um, bring it in white that's something to watch out for okay so now <clears throat> you look over here we have it shows our one part and that part has one layer and that's generally I recommend when you draw a part you bring it all in in one layer the way sheet cam works is it cuts one layer at a time okay now let's say for instance if these circles were on a different layer if I drew them on a different layer of my CAD sheet cam wouldn't know that they were inside they would show up red and they would be looked at as being separate objects I could still cut them but I would have to create a separate operation to do so okay more on that will be discussed later so <clears throat> let's say we just want to create an operation and cut these parts out to do that go to operation plasma cut now this first screen is the main one you're going to worry about okay all the other screens parameters are generally set and left alone first you need to decide your contour method you have the options of outside offset inside offset and no offset now if I click it shows what I'm doing here so no offset cuts directly on the line inside offset cuts on the inside of the object so it will cut on the inside of red lines and the outside of yellow lines and outside offset will cut on the outside of red lines and the inside of yellow lines so generally you're going to be using outside offset for most of your parts so select outside offset now we need to make sure that there's a layer here now sometimes sheet cam will pull the default or whichever layer you have up and put it in this box for you sometimes it doesn't it'll leave it blank and you'll need to click down below and select it okay now that layer could be named different things it's not always going to be default it could be one zero whatever the program that drew the DXF chose to call it or what you chose to call it okay so it's very important you have a layer so with that layer selected now we select the tool now each tool okay there's a long list now by default generally we have the tools for the hypertherm plasma cutting systems 
Um, if we are working with a separate plasma, a different brand plasma, um, we will most likely, if we can, will have imported your settings for you. Okay. But you have the ability to create new tools and that will be covered in another video. Okay. So let's say I was going to cut this out of 65 amp, 16 gauge steel. Select that tool. So the tool is loaded up. Now this box, if I click on it, will show me the parameters of that tool. And all these parameters come straight out of the plasma manual. You can check and look in your hypotherm manual and you see that these are in there, pulled straight out of the manual. So I'm just gonna cancel out of this. We'll discuss this later. Now generally when you're starting off, you're not gonna need to modify the tools. Um, but as you become more comfortable with the table, you're going to want to become familiar with changing parameters and modifying because each system can have its own little uh, fine tuning to give you the best cut. Okay. So down below here, the feed rate for that tool is listed. Uh, below that is max chain length. Generally, I don't recommend you use it. Um, this will allow you to chain cuts together. Um, it can be helpful for thicker materials, but in general, I prefer not to use it. It has a um, drawback of cutting up the skeleton, and that can lead to warpage in the plate while you're cutting it, and lead to misshapen parts. Okay, your overcut here, you can set that so that the torch will travel beyond the end of the cut a certain distance. Um, you can play with that and decide if that's helpful or not for you. Um, it's up to you. Offsets on open pass and lead-ins on open pass. Generally, you will not need. You can leave these unchecked. Now, reverse cut direction, you will always leave checked. Okay, That is because plasma cuts best going one direction. Counterclockwise for inside cuts and clockwise for exterior cuts. So path rules will be covered later on. So generally, initially you don't have to worry about the path rules. Now down below we have the lead-ins and lead-outs. For the most part I recommend using a lead-in. I like the arc lead-in. You can play with the different tangent and perpendicular ones okay, to help you decide um, which gives you the best cut, but I prefer the arc. I generally do not use a lead out and usually my lead in length is somewhere around this size thicker material will be bigger um, thinner material artwork I'll make it smaller okay now you do have the option to loop sharp corners what that will do is actually move beyond the end of a cut and circle back around allowing you to, in theory, get a square corner. Um, I don't find it to be very useful. Um, it may be useful when you're working with really thick steel and you're kind of pushing the uh, capabilities of your plasma cutter. So, Basically, when I pull up the screen, 90% of the time I make sure my out offset's set correctly. I make sure I have the appropriate layer selected. I select the appropriate tool from what I'm cutting. I check my arc lead-ins. If I want to change it, I will. Otherwise, I just click OK. And each time you pull this up, it will remember what you did last. and Pull the same parameters, the same size lead-in up. OK. So I'll click OK. So Sheet Cam generates the cut for us. It gave us a small little warning up here. If I hover over it, it said open pass were not offset, and it's saying could not fit lead in into some outlines. Okay, so by double clicking on this, I it pulls up the parameters of the cut, and I can make changes to that. I'm not going to do that quite yet. Um, 
we're going to talk about I'm going to leave those mistakes in there because I'm going to want to use those for the video so let me cancel out of this so initially sheet cam has generated the cut it's showing the true kerf width of the cut here by the dark green I can control the different aspects of the display by going over here to these icons here or also going to view it will show that I have all of these shown currently okay so let's say for instance I uncheck show true width now as I zoom in here you can see it's no longer showing the true kerf width it is instead showing the center line of the cut which I actually prefer generally it's a little bit easier for me to see exactly where the lead-ins are and in this mode show true width it's a little bit more obscure where your lead-ins are going to be on these small holes okay so but you have the ability to control lots of things segment ends gets rid of the points um, you can see that this show path ends currently there's only a few path ends right here on the ends of these lines because everything else is a closed object so if I turn those off those disappear um, you know it's showing the rapids it's showing the tool path so but these are common mistakes people make in that they accidentally turn some of these off and all of a sudden they can't see their image there's nothing there they're wondering why is my part not there why is it blank well it's because these things got turned off by mistake okay something to keep in mind so basically um, sheet cam has decided the order of the cuts and by default we have it set so it cuts the interior cuts first and then moves on to the exterior cut and then moves on to the next part generally that's the best way to leave it in the event that you have an error or a problem you end up possibly losing one part but not the whole sheet okay so I would say 90% of the time when I bring files in I generate an operation and I let sheet cam decide the order of the cuts and where the start points are going to be and then I let it be um, generally I will not mess with a whole lot of fine-tuning especially when we're looking at CAD drawn parts like this one now art parts um, pictures signs they're different we'll be discussing those later okay so once you've generated a cut if all you want to do is cut this part out just the way it is your final thing you need to do is to run the post processor if I run the post processor and save it it finished the post processing and it's done okay so now I have G code saved on my desktop that can be brought into mock and cut out provided of course that I'm using 65 amps tip amperage okay um, and I'm cutting 16 gauge steel all right a um, couple other basics um, right now we've saved the G code but we can save this job with everything here and then come back at a later date and change those things so to do that I can go file save job and save it as a job now one thing to keep in mind is every time you save a job it saves the tool set with it however so if you make changes to your tools say you decide that oh the 45 amp quarter inch aluminum tool runs better at oh 53 inches a minute okay if you make changes to these tools if you have an old job file that doesn't have the changes and you open that job file up it will bring the old tool set in with it and then at the end when you go to close out at sheet cam it'll ask you do you want to save your default tool set 
if you do you're overwriting your old tool set so to avoid that error um, anytime you make changes to these tool sets or modifications you can go file save tool set as save your tool set to a file somewhere on your desktop or some other location and then you will know that those changes and that tool set is safe if by mistake you inadvertently overwrite your tool set you can always come back to this file menu and open your uh, modified tool set okay um, lastly uh, another thing I want to mention in the basics um, we will be covering all these other modes and features in the uh, other videos for sheet cam um, would be things like your zooms here you got real simple zooms so we got zoom to machine zoom to job um, if there was more than one part in this job you could zoom to the part right now we only have one part so it won't make any difference zoom out here um, zoom in and also you can generate a job report okay once you have generated a file I can generate a job report for that now this report the timing is really key that you the, the more accurate your pierce time is um, and the more accurate your rapid speed is so let me set that to two seconds for pierce time and then a rapid speed of say 698 which is about the max speed for the table for rapids if I click OK it will use those parameters to estimate the length of time it will take to make the cut now what I have on this first page here it's showing me the operation time um, and then the cut distance um, the number of pierces it shows you the size of the plate you'll need so these can be very helpful and in this case we have another path uh, the, the last page shows us uh, the rapid distance total cut time and uh, number well the first one showed the number of pierces 10 so you can utilize this job report for cost estimation if you're going to be doing uh, plasma cutting for individuals it can help you estimate how much to charge so, so that's the basics on sheet cam um, I strongly encourage you watch the further videos where we'll go into more depth